there are really only five possible outcomes from the LCAO process, and they're represented um, in this list here. We can either have sigma bonding or sigma anti-bonding contributions. The sigma bonding will be able to identify by looking for orbitals that interact in a coaxial way. So when, when we see coaxial interaction of orbitals, that's how we know we're dealing with sigma bonding or an anti-bonding interaction. Coaxial is one possibility. Pi bonding is side-by-side -side interactions between orbitals. When they come together with their axes side-by-side, -side, that's what we call pi bonding, or we can have pi anti-bonding. And the fifth possibility is the two orbitals, two atomic orbitals could come together and there would be no net interaction at all, and the result is an unchanged situation from the uh, initial atomic orbitals. If we just take a look at sigma bonding and sigma anti-bonding interactions, we can see that those result from constructive overlap in regions where the wave function reinforce one another. So we have the same sign of those two p orbitals that get together in this coaxial arrangement. Again, it's coaxial because they both bring their symmetry axes aligned together along the same axis. The result, a bonding interaction, a sigma bonding interaction, means that there's an in enhancement of electron density, enhancement of wave function, and hence an enhancement of electron density in between the two nuclei. The bonding interaction results from constructive overlap. Anti-bonding interaction results from destructive overlap. So here we see that two wave functions came together in a coaxial way, but now they had opposite signs when they in the regions where they overlapped, and the result was a depletion of wave function, hence a depletion of electron density in between the nuclei, and this is what we call sigma star, star because it's anti-bonding. There's a net depletion, a subtraction of the wave function in that region, in other words, the wave functions from atom one and two cancel out each other in that region of space. I will show you pi later on, pi type bonding later on, but let me show you how we can have this idea of two orbitals coming together and there is no interaction. In other words, there's no overlap. And that's represented uh, um, here. It particularly happens when we have orthogonal orbitals, orbitals like the 2p, Z coming together with the 2px, and the result of that is there is no net contribution. And you can see why that would be in this uh, illustration here, why there is no net overlap. We have reinforcement, constructive overlap in that region, but we have destructive overlap in an equal and opposite m amount in that region. And the result is that there is no net contribution of bonding or anti-bonding from this example here, uh, say a 2s combining with a 2pz. The same situation exists when we have orthogonal px and pz coming together 